What's going on guys, we are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be returning to one of the most popular series on this channel, which is the Redraft series. Now, we have not done one of these in almost a month, which, like, I like, forgot a month or two ago, we're doing one of these every two to three days, which is pretty crazy to think and look back on now. But this 2005 draft had some really big names. Um, no real superstars, of course, there's a couple superstars, like they're always in every draft. But before we get into that, make sure to drop a like on this video. Let's try to hit 30 likes for the turn of the redraft series. Also, subscribe to the channel because we just hit 450 subscribers since the last video I made. And now we're almost at 470. So we've absolutely been skyrocketing up the subscribers. So if we can get in the next week before the pracking matches to 500 subscribers, that would absolutely be insane. Uh, I'm hyped up. I might be going to the Saints versus... Carlton match on Thursday night, so that's pretty insane. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. At number 10, I've gone with Trav Varko. Now he was originally pick 15. It's crazy to think this is the first time in the redraft series. This is the highest pick in this top 10. So that means this all the top talent actually got picked. Obviously there was a few misses, but still there was a lot of top talent. So Travis Varko never got the All-Australian nod in his career, but was a two-time Premiership player both for Geelong, and of course he played in the Collingwood Premiership, well, Coll not Collingwood Premiership, played in the Collingwood side that came runner-up to Dom Sheed's crazy goal, uh, but has been one of the elite half-forwards, played over 200 games, and kicking a lot of goals, being one of the best veteran players in the latter half of his career, and just an absolute great player. Next up at number 9, I've gone for Nathan Jones. There's a really pick 12, never really got into the elite bracket of midfielders in the AFL, never got the All-Australian nod in his career, got a best and fairest before, he also has been the captain for I think like 5 plus years, I didn't really check the years, I just know he's been the captain because recents, uh, like recency bias, it's not really bias, but you know he was recently the captain uh, before Max Gorn and Jack Viney eventually take over, uh, but a very very respectful player and is an absolute Melbourne legend. Next up at number eight, I've gone with Paddy Ryder, who was originally pick seven. Has been one of the best ruckmen over the past decade, moving to three different clubs, starting at SC and getting drafted, then moving to Port Adelaide, where he got his All Australian nod in the 2017 season, and then in 2020 is at the Saints. Had a great year and should follow it up again in 2021. Next up at number 7, I have gone with Sean Higgins. He originally drafted at pick 11 by the Western Bulldogs before eventually making his way over to North Melbourne where he's got his own one and only All-Australian nod in the 2018 season where he went to the elite bracket of midfielders. Now in the later part of his career, he did just move to Geelong uh, at the age of 32 to fill the Gary Ablett role that just went missing for his retirement. So interesting to see if he can carry over some of that 2018 form into Geelong in 2021. And number six, I've gone with Dale Thomas. Now Dale Thomas was one of the most exciting players when he first got drafted to Collingwood, being one of the most exciting half forward, midfielders, forwards, whatever you want to call him in the competition. His ability to take marks, uh, he was probably a cult figure in his Collingwood days where you saw the big, uh, like, I don't even know what they were, like dreads, the big blonde, Mop. Like, I remember I was a St Kilda fan back, you know, in that era where he was at Collingwood. And even though Collingwood were the rivals of St Kilda, I was still so excited to see Dale Thomas back in them days. He was just so exciting to watch. Uh, eventually, he got injury ridden, and sadly, uh, when he moved to Carlton, it was kind of a bit iffy. He definitely wasn't the same Dale Thomas. He kind of changed his role to like a respectable, like, you know, winger, half back, forward. He was just a more, more like a utility uh, when he moved to Carlton. Lost a bit of his athleticism and all that stuff. Still a very nice, respectable player, and I'll always remember Dale Thomas. At number five, I've gone with Grant Birchall. Now, he's recently picked 14 to Hawthorne and ended up starting his career with a premiership in the 2008 season before going on to win three more in the three peat. And was probably one of the most underrated parts of the three peat. Never getting an Australian nod, but very unlikely to never get one. He was a, a hidden gem. Him and Luke Hodge coming off the half back were absolutely deadly uh, and really set up how Hawthorne actually wanted to play their team in that super stacked team. So he doesn't have an Australian, but he probably should. 
have um have you ever watched this man during his days before that he became injury written with his hamstrings uh we all know he moved last year to the brisbane lions and since then he's been a very very respectable part has not missed a game apart from i think he had a little hamstring injury this year i don't know what injury i just remember he missed a couple games for it I kicked Alex Witherden out of the side, which I don't know was a great idea, but either way, he's still a very good leader for Brisbane. And number four, I've gone with Mark Murphy. Now, he was the original pick one in this draft, and since then, he's been a very respectful midfielder, uh, hitting pretty much his peak in that 2011 season where he took home a best and fairest for Carlton, and he's only All-Australian nod to go along with the AFL Coaches Association Player of the Year in 2011. So his 2011 was peak Mark Murphy. It's when they had Chris Judd running around. A great team. Uh, in the latter part, he's taken on more of a leadership role, being the Carlton captain for five seasons, which is really great to see. A uh, real staple of Carlton when they were going through the rebuild stage. Stuck with Carlton, never even thought about leaving. And an absolute champion player. At number three, I have gone with Shannon Hearn, and who's originally picked 13, has been one of the most underrated halfback defenders in the AFL. Real well known for his great innocent marking skills, especially later later in his career when he paired up with Jeremy McGovern. Been one of the best kicks in the AFL, uh, and then eventually took over captaincy in the 2015 season, uh, and since and then eventually gave up the captaincy in 2019. But we, during that time. He was a two-time All-Australian to go along with a Premiership, and he was the Premiership captain. And I'm a great defender. Hitting a bit of his twilight, and this could be the last year we see Shannon Hearn in the AFL, but he absolutely had a brilliant career over his time in the AFL. At number two, I've gone with Josh Kennedy. He was really drafted pick four to the Carlton Football Club before being involved in the famous Chris Judd trade. And now you look at this man, Josh Kennedy, they, you could almost make a case for Josh Kennedy actually being the winner out of this trade, or he definitely was the winner out of this trade. Uh, but it almost, you can see that West Coast almost won the trade, which you would not think when the, t the trade actually happened. Now, he was the West Coast captain for one year. He was also a seven-time leading goal kicker for the West Coast Eagles. He was obviously in that 2018 Premiership team for the West Coast Eagles. He's a two-time Coleman medal winner to go along with three All-Australian teams that he's been in, playing 260 games, kicking over 645 goals, which is ridiculous to think about. Now, started his career a bit slow in the AFL, but now we know he's one of the champion forwards of the competition, one the probably one of the best forwards of all time, because uh, he still has a bit of footy left in him. We don't know if this is his last year. Sadly, his career was pretty injury riddled um, in the later half of his career, which is really sad to see, but he's still a champion forward. I wouldn't expect if he was even near the Coleman coming up this year. At number one, I've gone with Scott Penabry. Now, he was originally pick five, and since then, he's been one of the, the great leaders of our game, being one of the best Collingwood players ever, and arguably the best Collingwood player ever. He was an AFL Premiership player in 2010, winning the Norm Smith medal. He's a six-time All-Australian to go along with being the Collingwood Games record holder to also winning five Collingwood Best and Fairest, which is absolutely crazy. And he's played over 316 games, which is absolutely ridiculous to see. And personally, he's one of the probably one of the great midfielders of all time. Never, probably one of the best midfielders to never win the big Brownlow medal. Um, I would say he has more time, but he is currently sitting at 33 years old. But he's not lost a step. Looks like he always has a lot of space and an absolute champion of the game. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. If you want me to keep doing these redrafts, because I kind of stopped them for a while, but I absolutely love doing them. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to drop a like and a subscriber on the road to 500 subscribers.